in the last stream, we were working on kind of two major things. We started with the embers mod and we got this setup over here up and running. Between streams, I have tried to organize and streamline this setup just a little bit because uh, the last setup that we had was very, very janky and a little all over the place. I have gone ahead and made some more fluid extractors as well as a few more fluid pipes so that now uh, we can kind of automate the entire process or at least uh, go through the entire process without having to manually move pipes, uh, you know, at each stage of the setup. Of course, on top of that, the other thing that we worked on was getting this guy over here, the storage terminal. This guy is super nifty in that it allows us to both pull all of the items that are connected to it via these little uh, storage item interfaces. Right now, we have two of them. We have one on our draw controller and we have one on our uh, giant compact chest. Between streams, I have gone ahead and made a couple more of these basic two by two storage drawers and I've connected all of those up to the draw controller and then filled those with most of the items that we have a large amount of. So all of our ingots, all of our gems, all of our kind of blocks. I'm not quite sure why diamonds are over here. I'm pretty sure that that is supposed to be stone. And I actually do know why that's in there. The reason that is in there is that uh, one other thing that I've done between streams is I've torn down, once again, the ancient cobblestone and then run that through the crafting table here from Tetra to get uh, all of the resources from Geodes. And when I took the stone out to repair my hammer, because these drawers are not locked, the stone was taken out of here. And then when I put diamonds back in, those diamonds went into this drawer because the draw controller is set to a higher priority. It has a priority of one, whereas over here, the uh, normal compact chest has a priority of zero. And I'm gonna assume that these are not regular diamonds. Like down here, we have regular diamonds. I think these are, yeah, pristine diamonds. So the very first thing that I would like to get done in today's stream is I would like to get a draw key, that being this guy right here, that's going to allow us to lock the drawers so that even if all of a certain item are pulled out of the drawer, the drawer is still locked to that specific item and no other item can go in that drawer. So to make it, we need two gold, one gold nugget, and then one upgrade template. To make the upgrade template, we do need uh, more sticks here. We're currently missing two sticks. Uh, thankfully, that should be fairly easy for us to do. Uh, I have done a little bit of base reorganizing between streams, of course. I've moved all of our uh, Prodigy Tech machines to be a little bit more organized. We have like the three tiers of machines here. We have all of the machines that require the energy on error heater, all of the machines that require the solid fuel error heater, and then all of the machines that require the uh, magmatic error heater, which is in the ground there. So hopefully those are gonna be a little easier for us to use going forward. So boom, that gets us the upgrade template. We do have a couple of uh, drawers uh, lying around in here. So we can grab two of those. And at that point, uh, we should have basically everything to make this draw key. It's interesting that it doesn't pull items from your inventory. And I think that's to do with this toggleable option right here. Right now, you'll see it says auto refill crafting grid, and then it says source network. I think we can toggle this. So you can have the source be the player, at which point, that still doesn't work because we don't have any sticks in our inventory. I think what we want is we want player comma network. What that's going to do is that's going to try and pull any items required for the craft out of the network first. So out of all of these drawers and this chest. And then if it can't find them in there, then it's going to look in our inventory and see if it can find them. So at this point, I think we should have basically everything uh, to make this happen. Although that still doesn't work, eh? Maybe this way. Hmm. Interesting. That still doesn't work. So I guess we just have to put these in here so they're actually in uh, like a drawer or in the system and then we can craft with it like so. Nice. Now you can right click drawers individually. For example, if we were to head on over uh, to our other smaller storage drawer network, you can just right click uh, each drawer and it will get the little uh, key icon there, meaning that it is locked. Alternatively, if you do have a draw controller down, you can just right click on the draw controller and every draw that is connected to that controller will be automatically locked. And so now, for example, if we take out all of this ancient cobblestone, uh, you'll see that even though there is no ancient cobblestone left in this drawer, it's still locked to ancient cobblestone and nothing else that we put into the system will end up in that drawer, which is perfect. Now that that is taken care of, the thing that I would like to work on in today's episode, of course, is trying to get down into the calculator mod 
and maybe even making our way up to this electric diamond here so that in the next stream we can start looking at completing the third chapter and moving on to the start of chapter four. Um, I think I've gone through basically everything that I changed between streams. Um, I think the only other change that I have made between streams is that I finally got around to fixing this filter here. Previously, I had the filter set to blacklist and I blacklisted the mystical dust and the energy on seeds. Between streams, I've gone ahead and just whitelisted the items that we want it to collect as opposed to trying to blacklist the items we don't want it to collect. So now only the items shown on that grid there should be pulled towards that gravity block. I did want to do something similar over here with these uh, mini gravity blocks. Unfortunately, there are four of them. It is doable. It would just require that we make three more filters, which isn't particularly difficult, I don't think. Uh, we just need a bunch of this mysterious wood, which again, I don't think is too hard for us to get. We do have 19 mysterious wood already, which is less than ideal because that is... Actually, I think that's perfect because I think we do already have one filter lying around yeah it's like right here again this is one of those situations where i didn't really want this to be filtered uh, to this filter here but it's gone in and, uh, and taken that slot anyway uh, if we unlock it we can then put items in take them out and then kind of lock it to be empty for the time being which i think is is fine so this will work over here but it will be a little bit awkward and uh, we are going to have to grab four mysterious dust At which point, over here, if we put one of these filters on each mini gravity block, so here, here, I guess that will work, but we'll move it in a second because I don't want it just kind of floating like that. Uh, and here, we can then quickly fix this guy. Like that. And then I assume if we put Mysterious Dust into each one of these filters, that should finally not pick up anything other than Mysterious Dust, which of course is currently uh, what we're using to charge our crystals for uh, the old farm over there. But uh, either way, that's not what I wanted to work on in today's stream. In today's stream, of course, we want to try and get this calculator. Now to get to it, uh, there are a couple of quests on the left here that we have yet to complete. The first of which is this quest here for the Sentient Core from Hearthwell. This requires four Lapis, four Glowstone, and one Azul Ingot, all of which I think we have already. So if we go ahead and look for the sentient core. I think we should be able to uh, fairly easily just shift click that in and craft up four of those. Perfect. Uh, as a reward, we do get four imprisoned lights here, which we can, of course, drop and crush with our crushing block to get four glowstone. Perfect. People did point out in the last stream that this is not 100% guaranteed. You uh, don't always get a glowstone every time you drop and, and crush the imprisoned light. Uh, apparently, it's a 75% chance, which is kind of perfectly demonstrated by the uh, the drop we just did there. We only got 75% of the four glowstone that we dropped back. Next up on the list here is the metal diamond block, a uh, diamond, but metal. This is made using that uh, sentient core that we just acquired with the shard of the sacred land. So uh, this time around, we take the sentient core, we right click the shard of the sacred land onto the sentient core, and then we can either put a metal diamond block or a regular diamond block Next to it, of course, we are going to go with the regular diamond block because we do not yet have any of the uh, the metal diamond blocks. So we'll take you. We will take our coal. We will take our shard of the sacred land. For now, we'll just grab the one of those. And I have moved our core stabilizer over to here just to make room for that ember setup that we have over there. And so now if we put down the sentient core here and then the diamond block here, it is almost certainly going to pop off, as we've seen in the past. And of course, Isaac, you fool, you do have to put the shard on first, but it will almost certainly pop off. But eventually, it should transform the sentient core here into a block of metal diamond. And there we go. One metal diamond block. Perfect. So following on from there, we do have uh, two more ingots that we need to acquire. The first one is the soul steel ingots. This is made by smelting raw soul steel, and you can make this with four metal diamond, which of course we can craft down from this metal diamond block that we just made. And then on top of that, we need one crystal catalyst, which we might already have, but even if we don't, should be fairly easy for us to make. And then four soul dust. You get this by crushing soul sand, 
And I believe currently the only way for us to make soul sand is using this rock core here with the shard of the living world and with sand. So again, exactly the same process that we just did, but this time with a different core, a different shard and a different catalyst. So do I currently have a rock core? I do not, but I do think we should have everything it takes to make another rock core here. We do, perfect. At that point, we should also have a shard of the living world. We do, good stuff. And we should also have some sand. We do, perfect. So if we take all those, we can once again do the exact same thing here with the rock core, shard of the living world, and sand. We might get a few pop-offs, but eventually this should transform into one piece of soul sand. And as luck would have it, you do get four soul dust from one piece of soul sand. So that should be enough to get us four raw soul steel to move on to the, uh, the calculator quest. And there we go. So we'll take this. We will drop this down under the old crushing block. That gets us the four soul dust. And at that point, that should be everything for the raw soul steel. Almost everything <laughs> for the raw soul steel. We just have to put it all uh, into the system, which is easier said than done at the moment. We don't have that much space still, which is unfortunate. Boom and boom. Perfect. So we'll set those smelting over in here. That's going to get us the uh, actual soul steel ingots needed for the quest. And while we wait for that to smelt up, we do have this quest line here that starts with the Zora sapling from Prodigy Tech. So to make this, you can either craft together any sapling with Zora leaves, although unfortunately we don't currently have any Zora leaves. And so I think the only way that we can currently get a Zora sapling is using our atomic reshaper. Now, I'm actually not sure if we have any primordium in there, although never mind, we totally do. We've got a ton of primordium. And we also do have a good amount of energy on dust here. And so if we grab a couple of those and get this thing heating up, we should be able to fairly easily take one of our pre-existing saplings. For now, we'll grab just an oak sapling throw that in over here. Once that gets up to the required temperature, that should produce a Zora sapling, at which point uh, we can then make the Zora steel ingots. This is made in the explosion furnace with one carbon dust, which we get uh, by grinding down coal or charcoal, and one raw Zora steel ingot, which we get by crafting Zora leaves with an iron ingot. And I'm fairly certain uh, we can get these Zora leaves here by growing and chopping down a couple of the Zora trees that we're going to get from this Zora sampling. So real quick, while we wait for that to finish, let's see if we have any coal or charcoal. We do indeed. Perfect. We only need the one. We'll throw that into our grinder. Over here, these should be done. They are indeed. And there we go. We have a Zora sampling. Nice. So let's throw this guy down, I guess, like right here for now. And then uh, once again, if we uh, shift, I'm hoping that will uh, transform into a tree. It does, at which point we can presumably just vein mine that down. And look at that. We get a ton of these uh, Zora leaves as well as a couple more Zora saplings. We've got 59 from one tree there, which is perfect. And so at that point, if we do this and this, we get the raw Zora steel ingot, which we can combine with the carbon dust in our explosion furnace. And I'm going to assume that much like our previous explosions, we want to have, I think it's five gunpowder and four sand. So four sand, five gunpowder, one raw Zora steel and one carbon dust. I think if we give that a redstone signal, that should be good. And there we go, we have the one Zora Steel ingot. Nice. Let's go ahead and claim a couple of these rewards here. We did get a Zora Altar. Applies or upgrades enchantments on Zora Steel equipment. Interesting. We also get a Soul Steel X. It does say that Soul Steel, I think, is highly enchantable. A strong material with high enchantability. Yeah, okay. So you might want to make some tools out of that going forward. I don't know if it is better or worse than diamond. It might be better than diamond once we enchant it, potentially. So now we have the Zora Steel Ingots, the Soul Steel Ingot, and the Archaic Circuit. We've unlocked the Calculator Quest. Use an Ember Receptor on the Power Cube, and it will accept power. To learn more about the Calculator Mod, read the full wiki found at github.com slash sonosonic slash calculator slash wiki. Okay, I'll bear that in mind. So it wants us to make a Power Cube and a calculator. The calculator is a little bit of a recipe. <laughs> it requires two moonstone, which I think we have made before. Uh, it's one of those recipes that is just something around a crystal, so that should be easy enough. 
The same is true for Onyx. That's made by smelting regular Onyx, which is cobblestone and another crystal. We then need two refined circuits, which we haven't made in quite a while, uh, but we do still have our uh, solderer here, and so I should be able to make that fairly easily. The archaic circuit we already have. The calculator assembly is made with four buttons and five brackish stone, which is yet another one of those recipes that is just something uh, around a shard. And then finally, we also need the calculator screen, which is made with yet more moonstone, glass, and redstone. So really, none of that seems too difficult, I don't think. Let's start by seeing if we can't make some moonstone. So as luck would have it, eight is the exact amount we need, so we can just grab one batch of it there. Uh, we then also need brackish stone, which again, I'm thinking we should be able to make fairly easily. I don't think we quite need eight, so that should be fine. And then we also need onyx, which also should be very doable. It is. Now, I'm fairly certain that the onyx needs to be smelted, so I will put some onyx into there to smelt. I'll also go ahead and bookmark the calculator and the power cube so we can see the recipes uh, up in here. As for the refined circuit, I'm assuming currently that our machine here is empty. It's not. We do have two circuit plates uh, left over from before, and so all we should need here is the refined circuit pattern, one iron, and then 12, oh, sorry, two iron, and then 12 tiny piles of gold dust which is just 12 nuggets crafted down. That is actually fine. Let's get the right circuit pattern here. That being this refined one. Let's go ahead and grab 11 more gold nuggets. That should take us to 12. Perfect. We can then grind those down over in there. We'll throw the circuit board up like so. Grab two iron real quick. Throw that in over there. And then as soon as this is done, we should be pretty much good to go. Let's make sure we do have uh, some solid fuel to throw it into that solid fuel aero heater there just to get the temperature up to where it needs to be. Onyx is done. We'll grab that. And at that point, I think we're pretty much there. I think we have what it takes to make the calculator assembly. We are going to have to make four stone buttons here. One, two, three, four. That should be everything for the calculator assembly. The calculator screen should also be very doable. It is indeed. And then at that point, we are, I think, just missing the refined circuit. Let's put everything into the system here so it has all of the items available to it. And yeah, the only thing we're missing now are these two refined circuits. So if we grab the 12 tiny piles of gold dust, throw those into the solderer, make sure the temperature is above 125, and slowly but surely, that should get us everything we need for the calculator. Now, we also need a power cube here. This is where some of those resources we just made come into play. For this, we need one soul steel ingot, four mystic iron ingots, and then four Zora steel ingots. The soul steel we already have, the mystic iron is made by smelting raw mystic iron, which is a combination of azul ingots, iron ingots, and heavy ingots. Interesting. We do have 13 azul ingots, and we also have 28 heavy ingots, so I think we should be able to make four raw mystic iron ingots fairly easily here. And by a four, I of course mean six because they're made in sets of three. That is perfectly fine. We'll put all six of those into there and let those smelt up. And then at that point, the only thing I think that we're missing in terms of the power cube is three more Zora steel ingots. So let's go and I guess plant down a few more of these Zora saplings. I actually think, actually, never mind. We don't even need any more. I'm pretty sure if we just grab three more ingots here, we should have more than enough of these Zora leaves to get uh, three more of those. At which point, I do assume that we need three more carbon dust. Which is, of course, three more charcoal in our grinder. And then I do think that it's still just five gunpowder and four sand. I think the, the rest of the, the process is still the same. But we can just put more ingots and more carbon in. I could be wrong on that, but we'll give it a try. Over here, those two circuits are done. So the calculator should be pretty much ready. Boom, and boom. So there is our first calculator. Uh, we actually can't do anything with this yet because we don't have enough energy, but as luck would have it, we are uh, on the brink here of unlocking a uh, an energy-holding device. So if we take our three raw Zoran, our three raw Zora steel ingots, our three carbon dust with four sand, and five gunpowder, we currently have one. We get more gunpowder using our red flint here. 
And I think it's a one-to-one -one ratio, if memory serves me right. So let's uh, once again drop down four red flint. Do one of those. That gets us to the five gunpowder required. And then hopefully, if I am correct here, five gunpowder, four sand, three Zora steel ingots, and three carbon dust should get us three more ingots. It totally does. Perfect. So the amount that you craft, like the amount of things you're trying to craft, doesn't really change, like the amount of explosives you need so you do you still need the same amount of gunpowder and sand if you're doing you know one zora steel ingot or a stack of zora steel ingots so it's usually more efficient to do it in uh, in bulk either way we do now have everything that we need here and so we should be able to throw all of that together into our system and then into a power cube of course we do need to grab our mystic iron here and put that into the system as well boom and boom there is our power cube perfect that gets us some XP, good stuff. And now, as it mentions in the quest book, if we want to get power into the power cube, the only way that we currently have of generating redstone flux is using the ember activator from the embers mod. So if we were to, for example, put this guy down, let's say right here for now, it currently has zero redstone flux. However, if we grab one of our ember receptors, the last one that we have, and we also grab the Tinker's Hammer that we made in the last stream, what we should be able to do is put down the Ember Receptor anywhere on the Power Cube, shift right-click here and right-click here to link the Ember Emitter to the Ember Receptor. At that point, if we grab some of the Embers that we got as Quest Rewards in the last stream, for now we'll grab just two, and we also grab a Hopper to feed the Embers into the uh, Ember Activator, like that, we should then be able to throw down a lever onto the ember emitter. And let me just see if we have one of the levers from embers rekindled. We do indeed. Let's put that down right about here. At that point, that should start sending uh, the ember power from this guy round and over into our power cube. And as you can see, we are getting redstone flux. At that point, if we grab our calculator, we can put it in the minus slot here to uh, subtract power from the power cube into the calculator, and now we should be able to actually use the calculator to craft some stuff. So uh, I will turn this off temporarily because I think we are going to need the embers uh, that we're making here in other machines going forward, and I really don't want to use all of our embers uh, too quickly. Uh, I will though quickly grab our last ember dial and throw that down right about here just so I can see how many embers uh, we currently have, and uh, we've got 3,500 right now, which is good. So if we look at the next quest, the stone separator, to make this, we need two more power cubes, so we are going to have to get a bunch more uh, Zora Steel ingots, a bunch more Mystic Iron, and some more Soul Steel. Thankfully, we should already have the Soul Steel there, so it should just be the other two. But we also need six reinforced stone and one reinforced iron ingot. So the reinforced stone can be made in the calculator by adding together cobblestone and locks, or cobblestone and planks, depending on whether you want one or four reinforced stone. It does appear to be a bit more efficient to do it with the logs. So if we do cobblestone plus oak wood, that gets us four reinforced stone. And at the same time, used four redstone flux there. So for this quest, we do need six. So I guess let's do one more batch of that. Perfect. Again, I'm assuming that used another four RF there. It did. We also need the one reinforced iron ingot. This is also made in the calculator by adding an iron ingot to the reinforced stone. So if we grab one iron ingot craft that up in here so iron ingot plus reinforced stone equals reinforced iron ingot and at that point outside of the two new power cubes that should be basically everything for the stone separator here which again is another machine that requires power and unfortunately the uh, kind of basic power cube here from calculator cannot be used to transfer power to other machines it can only be used to transfer power to items like the calculator if we want to transfer power to other machines, we're going to have to use the next tier of power cube, that being the advanced power cube, uh, which I think there might be a quest for up here, potentially. Um, or even if there's not a quest, there might be an item, uh, yeah, right here that requires advanced power cubes. So we are almost certainly uh, going to have to make those fairly soon. Boom and boom. We now have 28 Zora Steel ingots. The reason that we have 28 Zora Steel ingots is that uh, having looked at the next couple of quests here, all the way up to the Conductor Mast, 
it looks like we're going to need seven of these power cubes if we want to get uh, every single one of these quests completed and seven power cubes is going to require 28 zora steel ingots on top of that uh, i've also gone ahead and made enough of the uh, soul ingots right here the soul steel ingots we have seven of those and i've also made enough of the mystic iron as well yeah we got 32 of that so over the 28 required uh, to make all of the power cubes so i think in fact we could just go ahead and make seven power cubes here like that and we could of course use our first power cube to make the stone separator which is the next quest uh, in the quest book that requires uh, two power cubes we'll just put them all in the system for the time being uh, along with one reinforced iron ingot and six reinforced stone boom and boom and there we go we have a stone separator so much like with the power cube we are going to have to put this down and utilize the ember receptor to get power to it again you can't take power out of this power cube to other machines at least not to the best of my knowledge again i'm not going to send too much over just yet because i want to kind of try and save as much of our ember as possible but in here we can separate an item out into two different items for example the next quest is the scientific calculator now with more buttons to make this we need two more reinforced stone another calculator screen two calculator assemblies and then four enriched gold ingots these guys are made you guessed it in the stone separator and we can get this by separating out gold ore and thankfully one gold ore gets us the four enriched gold ingots required as well as two piles of small stone so we should have hopefully a gold ore over here we do we've been using our uh, atomic reshaper with stone and primordium to make random ores we can then take that gold ore throw it into the stone separator that should slowly but surely and hopefully not using too much power produce the ingots that we're after and at that point again it really shouldn't be too difficult for us to make the old scientific calculator here let's go take a quick look in our terminal and see what we are missing i will also go ahead and bookmark the scientific calculator so we need one more calculator screen which does require some more moonstone which thankfully uh, we can make that should be the scientific screen uh, that should be the calculator screen done as for the calculator assembly uh, we need 10 brackish stone so let's get two lots of you and then let's go ahead and craft up eight buttons like so we should then be able to craft two calculator assemblies put those back in and that should be almost everything for the calculator we're just missing that reinforced stone which of course uh, we can do in our regular calculator with cobblestone and wood perfect that should get us a scientific calculator this guy uh, does also require power so let's put you in here i'm going to assume it can hold maybe a bit more power than the regular calculator so yeah this one can hold 2000 redstone flux so double the amount of the base calculator and we have now unlocked division by the looks of it we can divide uh, two items if we so wish we also get an acorn stew as our reward here which i will go ahead and eat because we've not eaten it yet and it does give us a chance to uh, increase our hearts look at that you've gained two hearts from all of those unique flavors that we have been uh, tasting there so now we have a choice we can either make the starch extractor which is a, 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 i believe a way of generating redstone flux it says a good early option for power generation beyond using embers requires both a form of starch potatoes wheat etc and a furnace fuel so something like coal or wood so to make this we use our scientific calculator and we divide an energy module by an amethyst the amethyst we can get in the stone separator with lapis so that should be uh, actually extremely easy for us to do while that does that we also need to get the energy module which is where that one of the seven power cubes comes in uh, we can divide a power cube by purified coal which is enriched coal and an enriched gold ingot which is coal and redstone okay that seems very doable a little bit of a long craft chain but uh, not too bad whatsoever so we'll take one charcoal we'll grind that down in here we do need some fuel in the bottom there let's go ahead and throw a little bit of wood in there i think we can put planks in here as fuel we totally can perfect we should then be able to reshape the carbon over in the magnetic reassembler into coal once it hits uh, 125 degrees celsius over here we should have our 
amethyst. We do, as well as an amethyst shard, which for now, we can uh, just throw back into the old system here, as well as quite a lot of the other stuff that we have lingering in our inventory. We do also need more enriched gold here, so I will grab one more gold ore while we wait for this uh, magnetic reassembler, and I'll throw that in over there to get us four more enriched gold ingots. And once we have the coal, we should be able, I think, to combine that up with redstone. Yeah, that gets us the enriched coal. From there, we're going to uh, divide it by enriched gold. So we'll use our scientific calculator with u and u that gets us the purified coal from there we just need one of our power cubes which we do have on us so we'll do u and u and that gets us the energy module perfect so once we have the energy module and the amethyst it should just be as simple as putting both those into the scientific calculator and look at that we get a starch extractor which generates 40 redstone flux per tick so unfortunately i cannot seem to use the carry-on mod here i was really hoping i could do one of these with the power cube so yeah unfortunately i can't move these i was going to try and put the uh, starch extractor in the middle for now i think that's fine if we put the uh, if we put it down like right here i assume that can insert power directly into the stone separator uh, let's give it a try shall we so if we grab some regular fuel like wood and then we grab a starch of some kind for example something like wheat and we put both of those into here boom and boom i'm hopeful that that will generate some power maybe when this gets to the uh, the end of the bar here we're currently at uh, oh no it's going up look at that so the, the power is being transferred instantly over into the stone separator and this bar here is just showing like how long each piece of wood lasts for that's pretty nifty though it means we don't have to use our ember shards anymore which is good because right now we have to make those with our blood infuser and at the moment we don't have an automated way of getting blood although i do think we're going to try and rectify that in the next stream for now though we will claim our 64 bit or lava sand and uh, we'll look at the algorithm separator so for this we need four reinforced iron blocks so a bunch of that iron and reinforced stone really shouldn't be too difficult at uh, two diamond dust which as you may have guessed you can get by grinding down diamonds do we have any diamond or we do indeed we'll go ahead and grind down that as it gets us the perfect amount of diamond dust we then also need one stone separator we can make another one of those i think fairly easily Although I definitely didn't include these two power cubes in my uh, seven power cube calculation. Uh, but then we also need two advanced power cubes, which are made with regular power cubes, enriched gold, redstone ingots, which we can get by dividing iron by redstone, and then two ancient brick. Of course, we need four if we're going to get the advanced power cube. And presumably, ancient brick is made by placing down a regular Minecraft brick next to the uh, hourglasses of nostalgia. Now, right now, we only have 10 clay here, so only enough to make two bricks. So I think it's once again time for us to look at getting another batch of compressed clay, which we do, of course, with our rock cores, which uh, more and more we are uh, struggling to make. So we need stone, of all things. Yes, we are somewhat out of stone here. That is perfectly fine. We can begin uh, smelting up some more cobblestone here for that. I guess it's probably not going to hurt for us to get uh, the first two of these down. Which also do require smelting. I do think we also have uh, some spare furnaces in here. We do indeed. For now, we'll put those like here and here just to get this stuff cooking up. And we are once again running out of fuel. So I think what I will do is I'll uh, char up a couple more of the uh, beetroots here. A little bit more stone later. That should be everything for another rock core here. It is perfect. Uh, thankfully, we do still have a couple of heavy ingots. Yes, we should be able to make uh, a few more rock cores once we get more stone, should we need them. But uh, one rock core plus one shard of the root of life, which is uh, the shard that we just so happen to have the most of. And uh, unlike the other shards here, this one is just uh, a quick right click. There's no catalyst block, and that should instantly become compressed clear. But while we wait for it, I will do a quick breaking and replacing of our light collectors here to get a little bit more in the way of glowstone again not guaranteed unfortunately so we did only get one there but that is fine this guy is done so we'll take you we'll craft that down and we'll craft that down again 
I feel like we probably want to make more bricks than we need. We only need four bricks. However, as you'll know if you've watched uh, the previous streams, the hourglasses of nostalgia are not particularly fast. So it's probably worth our while making quite a few of these. Although I do assume that we could probably really try and amplify the speed at which the hourglasses work by putting like a bunch of them in a small area. Like right now, we do have this guy right here. And we also have no space in our inventory. Let me uh, quickly throw some cobblestone away there just so I can pick up the lever. But for example, over here we have another hourglass. So I'm thinking maybe if we do something like this and put down like another hourglass here, that should mean that we have this hourglass, this hourglass, the hourglass at the center of this cube and the hourglass, oh no, I guess those hourglasses aren't gonna affect the middle area here, but in theory, that should hopefully speed these up a little bit because there's two hourglasses working so close to it. Actually, I guess what we could do as well, if we wanted to, is we could do like this and this. So if we put one brick here and one brick there, now this brick should have access to this hourglass, this hourglass, and the hourglass at the center of the cube. And this stone should have access to this hourglass, this hourglass, and the one at the center of this cube as well. I think that's probably our best bet for getting some of the, uh, the ancient brick here quickly i guess while we wait for that uh, ancient brick there let's take a look and see if we can't get the uh, four blocks of reinforced iron so if we're gonna make four blocks of reinforced iron uh, that means that we need 36 reinforced iron which is 36 iron and 36 reinforced stone at uh, 36 divided by four as everyone knows is nine so one two three four five six seven eight and nine and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That should be everything over in our calculator here to get us 36 of the reinforced stone. We can then grab 36 iron. We can combine the two of those together, and that should get us 36 reinforced iron. Nice. We are running a little low on regular iron. We're down to our last eight there, but we do have um, 187 ancient cobblestone should we want to get more geodes, uh, and we also do have a fair bit of ancient cobblestone uh, in the works over by our hourglasses. So uh, let's craft those up into blocks. Perfect. And then what else are we missing for the separator here? We're just missing the advanced power cube, which I guess does require the redstone ingots. So we could get um, our last eight iron. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight redstone. Do something like this, but in the scientific calculator. And that's going to get us the, uh, the eight redstone ingots that we need in order to make the advanced power cubes. I do believe that we're also one enriched gold shy. Yeah, we only have three and we need four. So we are gonna have to run uh, one more gold ore here through our stone separator, but that should be uh, perfectly doable. So these are now done. We can grab all these. Someone in the uh, Twitch chat did point out a uh, an interesting fact here in that the hourglasses seem to work from like one side of the cube to the other like all of this cobblestone here was put down about the same time i made each cobblestone cube you know individually uh, but they were all made back to back and you'll notice that none of the front of the cube here is ancient cobblestone however all of the back of the cube are, is ancient cobblestone like all of these cubes have their backs set to ancient cobblestone so it looks like it kind of starts at the back and works its way forward you'll see it's gotten to about here on this cube so going forward, if we want something to become ancient quicker, maybe putting it towards the back of the cube is the way to get it done faster. Either way, we do now have four ancient brick. So if we head back over to here, we should be able to make this uh, algorithm separator. Now I'm actually not sure if the algorithm separator can do everything that the stone separator can do, but better. Let me look real quick. So for example, gold ore, can I put that into the algorithm separator? I can't. So we are going to have to make another stone separator, I think, unfortunately, which does mean using a few more power cubes than I was hoping uh, to make today, but that is fine. So let's grab a couple more cobblestone and wood. Let's get a little bit more in the way of reinforced stone here. And then let's see if we can't make one more of these. 
Alas, I think we are going to need one more iron. And we are currently fresh out of iron. Do I have enough iron nuggets, maybe? I don't. I have seven of the required nine. That is fine. Do I have any geodes? Also a no there. Let's just quickly grab some ancient cobblestone. Quickly make a little batch of geodes here. Grab our hammer. And see if we can't get but two iron nuggets over in our tetra table. Yeah, we, uh, we already got 35 there, so that is perfect. Let me try and grab all the rest of these. Unfortunately, you can't do the K trick over in here where you hover over a stack of nuggets, for example, and, and press K. It just doesn't, uh, doesn't work. So you do have to do that in here if you want to uh, quickly craft down all of your, uh, your nuggets. And now that we have that iron, we should be able to craft that up with the reinforced stone to get one more reinforced iron. That should be everything for one more stone separator. Boom and boom. At that point, we should be able to use that stone separator in the making of the algorithm separator just as soon, of course, as we grab our enriched gold, drop all that into the system, combine that up with the uh, previously made redstone ingots and power cubes, as well as, of course, the ancient cobblestone. One and two. And that should be pretty much everything here if we grab our diamond dust for the algorithm separator. Nice. Again, yet more XP. This time we'll throw this guy down, I guess, on the other side of the starch extractor. And now we should be able to use that to make certain other combination, uh, certain other items. For example, uh, in here, if we want to get this tanzanite, we have to run lapis or tanzanite wood through the algorithm separator. So the existence of tanzanite wood leads me to believe there is a tanzanite sapling. There is. You can make it in an atomic calculator with tanzanite wood, atomic binder, and tanzanite leaves, or with large tanzanite, atomic binder, and a sapling. So unfortunately, we're not quite there yet, but the next quest is to make the atomic calculator here. Uh, for now, though, we can, of course, use lapis. We do have it in abundance. So if we grab that and throw it in like so, I do think it's guaranteed here. I don't think it's a, a percentage chance. Yes, yeah, so we should get the uh, the one tanzanite required, uh, or one of the tanzanites required for this. We are going to need quite a few uh, if we're going to make the atomic assembly. So I do think we can make this. Let's grab uh, the tanzanite here. We might need more of that, but let me take a look. Let me see if we can make the atomic calculator so reinforced stone we do have we have six of it and we only need four so that is fine uh, moonstone we can of course once again make we do need yet more stone uh, but thankfully that has been smelting up let me do one of these and one of these just to get yet more stone smelting up should we need it in a second here uh, that should allow us to craft up yet more moonstone the third batch of the day therefore allowing us to make yet another calculator screen again the third of the day there at uh, diamonds we have the only thing we're missing now is the atomic assembly for that we need four advanced assemblies uh, which means we're going to have to get uh, actually just four calculator assemblies thankfully you do make these in batches of four uh, but that does mean 16 buttons which is more stone than we currently have right yeah we do not have enough stone to make 16 buttons bizarrely i did not expect stone to be the thing that we we're going to be limited on today but actually we should be fine There we go, that is 16 buttons. We'll throw those back into the system. That should allow us, hopefully, uh, to make four calculator assemblies just as soon as we craft up uh, some more brackish stone, which thankfully uh, requires cobblestone and not uh, regular stone. So we need one, two, three, four of those, which we can then craft up into the advanced assembly with one reinforced iron ingot and yet more enriched gold. So I am going to take two gold ore here and run that over through the old stone separator that's going to get us eight more enriched gold which i'm hoping is going to be enough while we wait for that let's grab uh, some more iron ingots here do i need two of these no i think i actually only need the one because i only need one advanced assembly which is perfect so i'll put one back here and then we'll combine up iron and reinforced stone to get the reinforced iron and just as soon as we get a little bit more in the way of 
the enriched gold, we should then be able to make the advanced assembly. Perfect. Now, in terms of the atomic module, <laughs> this also requires yet more uh, calculator assembly and four tanzanite. So we need three more lapis. We're going to run all three of those through our algorithm separator. That's going to get us the three missing tanzanite. We also need, again, more brackish stone. In fact, let's, and, and more regular stone as well. But let's see here, how much regular stone do we have? We have more than 16, which is perfect. So we should be able to make 16 more buttons. The question now is, do we have enough brackish stone? I'm not going to be convinced that we do. One, two, three. Yeah, we're not quite there, but we should be able to make the remaining required brackish stone fairly easily. In fact, I think eight is the perfect amount required here. One and two. That gets us four calculator assembly. And therefore, from there, we should be able to make four atomic modules just as soon as we grab the three remaining tanzanite crystals from our algorithm separator, put all that in the system, craft up the atomic modules, put those back in, craft up the atomic assembly, put that back in, and craft up the atomic calculator. Boy, that is quite the recipe. However, we now have the atomic calculator, which actually doesn't require any power whatsoever. It's just like a regular calculator that we have, but it's placed down instead of being in our inventory. So now, one of the final calculator quests before we can get into uh, this uh, third promise of tenacity here, which is kind of why we're working through this, uh, is this guy for the conductor mast. To make that, we need two energy modules and one fire diamond. The fire diamond looks pretty straightforward. It's uh, two diamonds and one blaze rod. We should have two diamonds and we should have one blaze rod. So if we do you, you, and you, that is done. Perfect. As for the two energy modules, this is where we need two more power cubes. And as of right now, I think we are fresh out of power cubes. Yeah, I miscalculated a little bit thinking that we didn't need a second uh, stone separator. And thus I was two power cubes short on my estimation. That's fine. I think what we'll do is we'll wrap up here, chat. Next stream, we'll come back and we'll see about getting this conductor mast up and running. This is a pretty nifty device that is both going to allow us to make the electric diamond required to get the promise of tenacity, but also it's going to let us uh, channel the power of lightning into redstone flux power that we can then use for things like our stone separator and our algorithm separator uh, going forward. And uh, once we get the promise of tenacity here, we can then, of course, move on uh, to these last couple of quest ending in the Garmon Bosio. I'm not quite sure what that is uh, or if I'm pronouncing that right whatsoever, but... Uh, We'll look at getting that, I guess. And then, uh, yeah, we can move on into uh, chapter four. Look at getting into a bit of Batania, uh, as well as a little bit of Solus, or a little bit more Solus, I should say. And uh, potentially even into uh, chapter five as well with uh, our chemistry and some of the final quests. For now, though, guys, as always, thank you for watching.